Well, here we are in my living room, full of all sorts of things, but mainly steam engines. And it's just coming up to this year's STWWWW. So as usual, I'm about to give you a video tour of my entire collection. This year I think I will start in this corner of the room where my uh, smaller engines are. Some very miniature ones, some not quite so miniature but still the smaller end. On this shelf we have Quality number one, and quality is the name of the maker, or at least their brand name. There's an air list and a castle model B, and then we have four SEL engines. It's a minor, junior, standard, and the major. Then on the next shelf down we start off with some CK and Crescent engines, numbers 1, 2 and 3. Then there's an aid, peak number 2, David Old, vertical in there, and a couple of Latimer playing L4 and L5. And then in the uh, the miniature engines, in the back row there, we have a Stuart ST Biddleston engine, a Tony Green USC engine, that's a SEL Marine engine, tucked away in the back there is a new Watt rocking piston engine and hidden in there is a microcosm M22 there's another microcosm M27 with a prototype boiler then we have some big engines so no, no, micro, minor, and then some Philcraft engines. It's a Penny, Jenny Wren, uh, difficult to see there behind the, uh, the glass dome, is a Lilliput, and on the end there, there's a marine engine. And then in the front row here we have a Hilsha steam powered windmill and for those of you who are not familiar with it the steam engine is that tiny little piston there at the top and then the boiler is the, uh, the glass tube then next to that we have a Paul Cooper engine, Tony Wright, Tiny, uh, Willesco D2, Microcosm M16, and an M6B, and then we have some more peak engines, it's a major. And then a number one, number three, number four, and number six. And then there's the one in the glass dome, which is the beam engine without the boiler. And then on the end there, there's a complete beam engine, complete with boiler. And then tacked on 
the front of that uh, the shelf of miniatures is the Hera Collection steam walking stick. And then onto the main section of stationary engines. Uh, the one on the end there is a Bassett Oak, which is still under restoration or repair. But I've put it on the shelf here just for this video. Uh, next to that is a steam crane. Uh, I don't know who the maker of that is, but it's to a design by um, LBSC published in Model Engineer magazine. And then we have a couple of Bing engines, 130-442 and 130-466. And then on the next shelf down we have a Belesco D3, a couple of Steamco engines, it's a Steamco STCO1 there and the STCO4 there and then a couple of CK V twin engines one with a vertical boiler and one with a horizontal boiler and then on this shelf we have a Mersey 52 a Corette 147 slash 2 Whedon 903 and a couple of Marv Industries engine, horizontal engines one sto uh, sterno heated and one electrically heated and here we have a couple of Weller designed school made engines it's the Court Lodge Mark 1 there and the Albury Manor Mark 4 and then next to that we have a Saxon Meister don't know what the model name is model number is for that one I've never been able to find out and then here we have a Mr Power YB001 which is a sort of a copy of the Willesco D4 we have sitting next to next to it, and then there's the modern Willesco D4, which is nothing like the uh, the original. That's the uh, candle powered one, and then on the end there is a Willesco D5. And on this shelf we have. Well, let's go D10 slash 100, which is the special edition one for their 100th anniversary, is it? Or something like that. And then there's a standard version D10. And D16. And then down on the floor here, we have a Stevens and Model Dockyard 2004 There's a Gasolan, Gasolan DM2 and a GPM D1.5 OK, on this row of shelves we have some Kleinemeyer engines uh, vertical the engine house and the locomobile and then we have Willisco D14 and a little Fleischmann 120 slash 1 and on the next shelf down we have a couple of views of fork engines the 483 slash 3 and 1461 slash 0 and then there's a T Haynes school engine and then there's a 
ON2 dash B doll 511 slash 3 well, let's go D45 and at the end there there's the Sussex Steam new common engine which I've never actually got working on this shelf we have an IND X electric engine which I think may be model number 2000 not sure about that next to that we have a completely unidentified probably scratch built engine and then there's a Marklin donkey engine which may possibly have originally been a crane and then we have Trev's toy box TTB V1 and there's the Earth Ernst Planck Hercules on this shelf we have another Marv Industries it's the vertical one which uh, has the uh, name Robert Fulton line some people give that name to all of the Marv Industries but I'm not sure about the others this one definitely has the name on it Robert Fulter line in that rather fancy decal there and then next to that we have uh, the most the most well-known unknown engine the Basil Harley unknown it's famous for being in one of his books as being an unidentified engine and then we have a couple of Wilson Brothers engine small and large I don't think they ever did have numbers and then there's another Owen engine 68 Tony Wright built hot poly engine designed by Tubal Kane and uh, Bernard Vulcan, a couple of uh, major toys, little red engines, there's an electric one and a sterno one, and then getting a bit dark in the corner there, there's a Bing 130 slash 812 and a Marklin 4105. And here we have a, a Whedon 400, a Jensen 70, Empire B31, and Power Toy engine. I don't know if it's got a model number, Canadian made. Tucked away under here, we got a couple of Kenneth Wells stationary engines. One with the pressed steel frame and one with the cast alloy frame. Next to that is the kit built Opitech 420, Whedon 14, the Bowman 175, and the Luton Bowman PW201. Down there we have a Bowman M101 and an E101, pretty much the same but with a wooden base. And then there's a twin cylinder M122. And then on the on the floor underneath those we have a big Willasco D141. And on this rack we have on the top shelf here a couple of Mammod twin twin cylinder engines. There's the, an SE3 and SP5. And then on this shelf we have a 
couple of Mamado C1s. There's a later, slightly later version there, and a slightly earlier version there. This is the uh, immediately post war version, and then on the next shelf down, we have the pre war version of the SC1, the SC2, SC3, and SC4. And on the next shelf down, we have several SE2s. Various stages in its development, culminating with the SE2A on the end there. On this shelf, we have a whole row of Mamod miners and derivatives. The one on the end there, actually, not made, not a Mamod one. It's made by MF. And that's a copy of the pre-war Mamad Minor 2 with a twin cylinder. All the rest are actually Mamads. There's a Minor 1, early Mamad, Minor 1 there, and a Minor 2. And then a slightly later Minor 1 and Minor 2. And then we have an SP1, an SP2, and then on the end there, there's a special edition SP2 made especially for the 10th anniversary of the forum. And then underneath there, there's a Mamod SP4. And SP6, and then on the floor here we have some Sildon engines. There's a full, full house here. There's a 13 stroke one, 1945 version, and the 1946 version. And then there's a 13 stroke two, stroke three. Stroke four and stroke five. I'm watched over by a sleeping Freddy there. Sitting all on its lonesome there is a red devil, twice winner of the Chantry Challenge. And here we have some pop up boats. The top there is the Rattan Deep Titanic. We have the Hamburpa CK Type E and a Rattan Deep Thunder Cruise. And then here we have a pop up raft. There's a Welby unknown number. There's a Welby number, steamboat number one. There's a tugboat there, of unknown make. There's a speedboat there, which I had a model number for, the MF418, but I don't know who made it. Then we have a couple of another couple of Rattan Deep engine engines. There's a speedboat and a tug. And then we have a couple of uh, slightly larger steamboats. There's a Theron's Firefly and Midwest Fantail. And then down here we have some marine engines. There's a three Mamod ones there, it's the ME1, 2 and 3. And then Tony Green, or actually four Tony Green USC engines mounted together in 
and to a four cylinder engine. And then we have a couple of Willesco marine engines, a D48 and a D52. And then in front here we have uh, a Midland Models Trojan. And just behind that, Tony Green steam plant produces another USC engine. And then here we have Steamco STCO4. And in this section we have uh, Mamad SW1 and the award-winning Steam Dray. Next shelf down we have the Willesco D430. And the D40 Old Smoky. Then there's the Mamad T1. Sorry, it's a Mamad Showman's engine. And then there's a the Mamad T1. And then on there, there's the Kenneth Wells traction engine. And here we have some rollers. On there, which is uh, my take on the man roller. It's unusual, it has the main roller at the back. Then we have Lesco D36, David Old roller, and the Mamad SR1. And here we have some locos, it's the Hornby rocket there, the G100. And here we have uh, an Aveling and Porter look-alike based on a Mamad T1. And here we have, tucked away at the back there, Maxwell Hammond's Birmingham Driller, Dribbler. The Bowman 234 and the Mamad SL6, that was the Jubilee edition. And here we have Steam Trike made by Garkin and Mamad SA1 and uh, here we have Sharabang, Stanley style Sharabang, based on the SA1. And next to that, there's an old style, an early style dog cart type car, which is based on the Willesco fire engine. And here we have a couple of fire engines, there's a Mamod FE1. And there's the unmodified Lesco fire engine D305. And then on this shelf we have some Meccano engines. Or engines designed to go with Meccano and associated systems. On the end there we have Marklin 4099 slash 01. That's the one that can be built up as either a vertical or a horizontal. Next to that we have an actual Meccano brand steam engine and the other one there is a Mamad Meccano engine. And next to that is the slightly later SP3 version and next to that is the one that I made I modified an SP3 into what it should have been made I like 
more along the side, the, the same style as the rest of the SP range. And then on the end there, it's a Kleinemeyer BEE. And here we have Walesco D11, which is basically D10 on an extended base. And it includes some Tronico parts, which are sort of a bit like Meccano, but not compatible. And this is how it's supplied with the D11 built up as a pump in it, as a pump, an oil pump. And next to that we have uh, an Alga John Ericsson engine. And I've put that alongside the um, Meccano type stuff because it does have a fair number of Meccano standard holes. So you could build some Meccano onto it although it's not supplied with any. And then down here we have a sectioned Mamad SE3 and a three-cylinder SE3 which I call the SE3C and there we have a sectioned engine unit from a Willesco D16 and I do also have some non-steam engines not many, they all fit on this coffee table here there's some uh, Stirling engines, low temperature Stirling engines a couple of drinking birds there some more, a couple more low temperature sterlings and uh, it's a pneumatic engine flame liquor and another sterling there and there's a couple of nitinol 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 can't remember what it's called now wire engines memory wire engines which I've never been able to work out exactly how they work. 